welcome back to the studio everyone. Today I have a bouquet of sage and we're going to be doing some organics burnouts and see if we can turn this sage into bronze. These Wyoming sage are tough little plants. A lot tougher than I am, that's for sure. Other than collecting the plants, the first step is to find the right size piece to cast. I'm kind of limited with the size of flask I have, so I want a piece big enough to be interesting but not too big for the flask. Looks like this one's just about the right size. With a lot of care and precision, we'll eyeball the best place to cut this in half. Someone cut that a little crooked, so I'll use some sandpaper to even it out. I 3D printed this little pedestal and I figured it'd make a nice base to put it on. Once it was sanded flat and square, I just hot glued it to the base. A little bit of canned air makes the glue freeze a bit faster. And the excess glue that squished out I'll just scrape off. I cut several sprues to put on the bottom that'll let the metal in and the air out. In hindsight I should have put one big sprue at the bottom to act as a reservoir to prevent some of the metal shrinkage. I did get some metal shrinkage but it wasn't too bad to affect the casting. For this method I'll just attach the sprues and then attach those to a piece of wax that'll act as a makeshift pouring funnel. Now the process of turning this into bronze requires me to burn this out of the investment. It works like this. We set fire to it, and once it's burned completely away, there'll be a void in the exact same shape as a sagebrush. The problem is, in the kiln, there's no oxygen. So it doesn't ignite quite like this. It just kind of slowly smokes away. How long does that take? I don't know, but I need to. So I need to make some test pieces. The test pieces will help me get a better idea of how long it takes for the wood to burn away. I'm just gonna put them in cheap plaster of Paris. Plaster of Paris isn't that great for casting, but it'll be good enough to represent the burnout rate. For the sage, I'll get that ready to put it in some high quality investment. It's similar to plaster, but specially formulated to handle the heat and it's porous so I can use my vacuum caster on this. This wax plug isn't very pretty, but I was able to just pull it out and then I won't have to melt it. So these are my test pieces. I'm gonna put these in the kiln. I'll come back maybe 12 hours and check the first one. The kiln will slowly heat up and it'll top out around 1300 degrees or I'll just let it sit and burn. So it's been burning for about 11 hours now. Let's see how much is burned away with our test pieces. Wow, that's hot. I can see a little bit. It looks like it would, but it has no structural integrity. So I'm trying to figure out if it's actually still organic or if it's just carbon ash at this point. So there's still some residue in there, but honestly, I think it's just ash. I feel like everything is actually burned out. Ideally, I don't want the ash in there because I know that's gonna cause flaws. So the question is the best way to get the ash out of the investment. I think what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna shut the kiln off, let everything cool down, try to rinse the ash out while it's cold, and then heat it back up to pouring temperature.
because it's so porous, it's actually hard to rinse it out. The water tends to run right through instead of pooling up and let me pour it out. So I have to find a balance to rinse enough, but not too much, because I also don't want to erode any of the detail. Not sure if that helped or hurt. I'll put it back in the kiln to heat up to pouring temperature. Here's my other test piece. You can see the remnants of the sagebrush in there, but if you touch it, it's just all powder. And if I blow on it, it's all gone. Once it's back up to temperature, it's time to melt the metal. For that, I'll go to my stack of ingots and use some homemade tin silica bronze. My vacuum chamber also becomes a vacuum table with a little silicone rubber. For a seal, I just use wet silicone as well. The flask is put down hot so the metal won't freeze as quickly when I pour it in. It's a lot of little spaces for the metal to get into. The vacuum will help pull it into those spaces. The extra heat will help keep the metal fluid enough to reach those spaces. And once it had some time to cool, I bring it over for the quench. There's something there, but it's hard to tell what. My Harbor Freight Sandblaster will reveal what we've got. But first, let's cut off the base. We'll grind off the cutoff marks and give it a bit of a polish with a wire wheel. And of course, we'll add that liver of sulfur patina for color. One more buffing for good measure. It's always a surprise how these Lost Organics castings are going to turn out, but I think this one turned out pretty well. The wood grain is captured, the small branches are captured. Thanks to the vacuum casting, I think it was pretty successful. It even has a nice ring to it. Check out some of my other videos. Thanks for watching this one. Bye bye.